provision in a seed. Provision in a seed. Now, as we deal with this tonight, uh, like I said to you last week, this is the most important message I've ever preached before in my life. Um, I, need, I, I don't need my glasses. Yeah, I'll be all right. Um, but this is something I want to just pick up where I left off in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Now, I want to start off with some statements. I want you to write these statements down because they're just paramount. How many of you believe that we are children of the supernatural? I believe that with all my heart. Now, why would I say that we're children of supernatural? Because we came from Sarah who got pregnant because God planted a word. She got pregnant because God made a promise. With Ishmael, Ishmael came from the flesh. But with Isaac, Isaac came from the promise. In fact, let's look at that. Go to, go to Galatians first, Galatians 4, Galatians chapter 4. I, uh, I've been thinking about this ever since last Saturday. Galatians chapter 4, verse 23. Verse 23 says, But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. Now, the one that was of the bondwoman was Ishmael. But he of the free woman was by promise. And that was Isaac. Amen? And then he said, uh, if you go to verse... Uh, 26, but, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that beareth not, break forth and cry thou that travaileth not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Verse 28, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. Isaac was a child of the promise. He came because a word was given. And out of that word, a supernatural pregnancy, and out of that supernatural pregnancy, Isaac came forth. But as then he that was born after the flesh, he persecuted him that was born after the spirit. He says, same thing going on now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Verse 31, so then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Now, I want to read verse 31 in the Amplified as well. Right here in the, in, in the King James, it says, we're not children of the bondwoman, but we're children of the free. The Amplified Bible says, so, brethren, we who are born again are not children of a slave woman, the natural, but we who are born again are children of the free, the supernatural. Say out loud, I am a child of the supernatural. Those of us who are born again, we are a product of the supernatural. That born again is a supernatural manifestation. You were born of the flesh, but now being born again is a manifestation of the supernatural. Now, don't forget about what, how many, how many want to live in the super, supernatural? God spoke to me. He says, there's much more. There's much more out there. It says, my people have settled for the natural when I have made available for them supernatural. They're trusting in what the natural can do for them. But what happens if you're the wrong color, the wrong age, live in the wrong neighborhood? Huh? It's time for us to learn how to abide in the supernatural. Now, folks, that's where I'm going. I'm inviting you to go with me. But listen, this time I'm not looking back. I'm inviting you to go with me. I'm, I'm inviting you to go step by step with me. I'm, 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 I, want, I, I, I backed up to carry you into this place of the supernatural, but we're not children of the natural. We're children of the supernatural. And I tell you, whatever the world can't give you, God's already given it through his grace. Are you following me now? All right, now, we're children of the supernatural. Now, listen to this statement. I want to make three points before I start preaching. The supernatural cannot be separated from the Word of God. The supernatural cannot be separated from the Word of God. 
There can be no supernatural without the Word of God, the seed of the supernatural. A believer who is far away from God's Word is far away from the supernatural. A believer who is far away from God's Word is far away from the supernatural. That's just telling you, don't expect supernatural manifestations if you're far away from the Word. Now, the Word comes in like a seed. Light is shed when the Word comes in. The darkness disappears when the Word comes in. Then you manifest the supernatural when the Word comes in. Look what happens. See, if you're in a situation you don't know what's wrong, you don't know what's going on, you don't know what to do, somebody gave you darkness and said you're supposed to be sick, somebody gave you darkness and said you're supposed to be defeated all your life. See, the Word is light. I said the Word is light. And when the Word comes in, the light comes in. And when the light comes in, the darkness leaves. How I many you know when you turn a light on in a dark room, the darkness moves quickly? But when the darkness disappears because the Word has come in, then you manifest supernatural. I'm talking about healing, but it came through the supernatural means. I'm talking about deliverance, but it came through supernatural means. I'm talking about your provisions, but it came through supernatural means. See, people can, you know, they operate based on the protocols of this world system, because there's no other way if you're not born again. See, if you're born again, you're not limited to the natural way of doing things. Honey, God has put his, he put uh, the, there's a supernatural avenue by which you can travel to get what even the natural won't give you. And the natural, a man who has cancer, they just get ready for him to die. But in the supernatural, you can access healing. Hey. In the natural, you don't have enough degrees to live a life of provision. You hope for a house all your life, but in the natural, it can never happen. But through the Word of God, there's a supernatural avenue to make that happen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to live in the supernatural. The Word is seed. The supernatural is fruit. And God wants you to be fruitful. Now, I, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this and then we'll get started preaching. Somebody say, haven't you started? No, I'm just kind of getting get us on the same page. I don't care what the condition is in the natural. I don't care where you've come from. I don't care the, about the amount of education you've had. I don't care about any of those things. I want to introduce you to the avenues of the supernatural that can only be initiated through the Word. The Word is the gateway into the supernatural. No Word, no way to access the supernatural. In other words, grace has already made everything available that you'll ever need in your life. How to access it, it can only be accessed through the supernatural. And that means the Word is the way that we access that. Now, let's go back to uh, Mark chapter 4. Now, that was just a little intro of where I believe we're going to kind of end up here. Mark chapter 4. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, you don't, you don't have to sit around and hoping and praying that God might do something or, oh, is, is he going to move? Oh, Lord, have I been good enough? Oh, God, have, have I been so bad that I can't even get you to? I am going to show you how to, 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 I don't want to belittle this, but, I, but you'll get a picture. I want to show you how to play the game. It's not a game, but I want to show you how to do it so you're no longer wondering if, but I want this word to move you from if to when. So it's not if you're going to be healed. Watch this, but. See, a farmer doesn't plant a bunch of seed in the ground and say, if my harvest comes up. They plan on when it comes up. I want to move you from the realm of if to the realm of when. No more if I have my provisions, but when. No more if 
I'm going to get healed. When? No longer if I'll be happy, but when? And it's through the avenues of the supernatural. Now, uh, let's pick up in verse 14. The sower soweth the word. Now here, the word is equal to seed. He's talking a parable here and explaining the parable to his disciples, and he uses farming to, to illustrate this whole deal. He says, the sower soweth what? The word. Say out loud, the word is the seed. The word is the seed. The word is the seed. Say it again. The word is the seed. All right, now, verse 15. And these are they by the wayside. Now, he takes the seed, and he's now going to, to show us four grounds that the seed is going to be sowed into. Now, three times he's going to sow it in three different grounds and it won't produce a harvest. But only when you put it in good ground will it produce a harvest. Now, let me say this to you. What he's about to show us is the ground and the ground equals the hearts of men. So we're talking about the word being sown in the hearts of men. So he's talking about the conditions of the heart and the conditions if, if the wrong conditions that will not produce a harvest versus the right condition of a heart that will produce a harvest, and we're talking about the harvest being produced in life, similar to when you put a seed in the right kind of ground, that it will bring forth a harvest or not, depending on the ground. You see, the soil has as much to do with the harvest as the seed. You can take seed and put it in the wrong type of soil, and it won't grow. You can take the Word of God and put it in the wrong kind of heart and it won't produce nothing. Are you listening to me? You can take the Word of God, the promises of God, stick it in the wrong type of heart and the condition of that heart won't grow a harvest similar to the conditions, the wrong con conditions of, a, of the soil won't grow corn. Now watch carefully. So he talks about the first condition of the heart and there, and these are they by the wayside. So we looked at this the other week. The first type of condition of the heart is the wayside heart. What, what's the wayside heart? It's where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. A wayside heart is the seed was sown, but it wasn't sown deep enough to develop a root system. And as a result of it not having a root, then it was basically on top of the ground. And so in the natural, if you throw corn seed out there and it doesn't have enough depth, it, you know, it, it's not going to last long. It'll start growing above ground, but because it doesn't have a root, then the birds of the air will come or the sun will kill it, okay? And so he says, this is the person who, you know, uh, they heard the word, but it didn't get in their heart. It didn't get in their heart. And the Bible says, Here's the man that when the word is preached, he understandeth it not. So the seed was sown in wayside ground. So why is it that this kind of guy, this wayside heart, doesn't produce a harvest? Because he heard the word, but he didn't understand it. And because he didn't understand it, it didn't get in his heart. You can hear the word, but don't understand it, but it won't get in your heart. I could be preaching to you right now. If you don't understand what I'm saying tonight, it won't get in your heart, and immediately Satan will come and stake the word out of your heart. So no harvest there. Verse 16, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. So the second type of heart condition is a stony heart or a stony ground, which when they have heard the word, immediately they received it with gladness. All right, now here the word got in. It got in. They, they heard the word. They received the word with gladness, but they didn't have a root in them Selves, and so endure but for a time afterwards when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So what happened here is they heard the word, it got in, but they didn't spend enough time in the word. They didn't spend enough time meditating in the word. They didn't spend enough time pondering the word. What happened? They didn't let the word stay in there long enough to develop a root. So what happens in life when persecution and affliction comes it comes to take away the word out of the ground before it can develop a root. So when you've received the word, the devil says, let me throw some persecution. Let me throw some trouble there because I don't want them to develop a root and be able to be fruitful. And so this is the guy, comes to church, hears the word, understands it, receives the word, but then he goes home after Saturday night service and doesn't spend any more time with that word. He doesn't listen to the tapes. 
they don't have tapes anymore. He doesn't listen to the message over again. He doesn't read books over it. He doesn't spend time with it. He spent one hour with that word. One hour is not enough to develop a fruit, so when, to develop fruit. So when persecution and affliction comes, you lose it. You lose it. All of a sudden, that which you had in you, which had potential to give you harvest, you let the trouble of the world take it away from you. So now that's the second time you've sown it, received it, but didn't spend time with it long enough to develop a root system. The root system wasn't strong enough. So what happens when you get the word, like you get this word here, you get this word, man, you go home, spend personal time with it. You read the scriptures over yourself. You listen to the message again, pull it up off the, the whatever the computer thing is, and get it in your heart until it's in there automatically. And when the tribulation comes, you, you, this is how you can tell you've meditated on the word long enough. When the tribulation comes, then what's in you comes out. How I many of you know you don't never know what's in you until the squeeze is put on? But when that, when that word is rooted in you, it comes out. Like I told you last week, I did something to my hip, and the first thing that came out is, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Well, that, that's a result of me spending almost every day uh, saying scriptures concerning my healing over. I'm putting it in there. I'm spending time with those healing scriptures. It's developed a root on the inside of me. So I don't think first thing, uh-oh, something wrong. Uh-oh, I'm going to die. Uh-oh, I'll mess up. No, first thing I think is, I'm healed because persecution can come, but that word has developed a strong root system so you can't take it from me. Okay? So here's the third one. The third one we looked at was the thorn ground. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as they hear the word, and look what happens. The cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things came in and they choked the word and it becometh unfruitful. So they got the word on the inside of them. They meditated on the word. They developed a root system. And so what happened was they lost focus on the word. They start focusing in on all the cares of the world, everybody's trouble, everybody's drama became their emergency. All of a sudden, the lust of the flesh got your eyes on pursuing things instead of pursuing God. And then the ground got so full of thorns and cares and stones that what it did is just choked the harvest where it could not yield forth fruit. In other words, what the devil will do is in order to get you off the vision you should be focused on, he'll give you two visions. And you'll start focusing on a bunch of, you can only give your attention to so much. And then if he can just split your attention and you're, you're, you're focusing in on what's going on with my kids. Oh, Lord, have mercy, my husband might be cheating on me. Oh, Lord, they think I might going to be fired. Or you start doing all of that, then you're not focusing on what you got on the inside of you. And so it, it chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. So that's three times the word was sown in the ground, but yet to produce a harvest because the ground wasn't good enough for the harvest or the fruit to come until you got to the fourth ground. And the fourth ground in verse 20, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Everybody say good ground. Good ground. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. See, what, what, how does he define good ground here according to verse 20? They heard the word, watch this, they received it. They received it. They received it. In other words, I hear the word, I believe it, I receive it, that's it. I don't care what happens, I don't care what trouble comes, I know I'm not moved by what I see, I'm not moved by what I hear, I'm not moved by what I feel, I receive it, that's it. That's what it says, then that's what it is. That guy receives it. He hears it and he receives it. He accepts it, another uh, a synonym, synonym, synonym. He accepts that word. He accepts it as being true. He receives it, he accepts. If he says by his stripes I'm healed, then I am healed. I don't care how many specialists say it, I'm not. I accept that word. That word goes in and it brings forth uh, fruit. It brings forth a uh, harvest. Now, here's what I wanna say to you tonight. Don't, don't, for one minute think that this is not gonna work. We're just wasting our time. B getting in the Word is a waste of time. Coming to hear the Word preached on Saturday night is just a waste of time. No, 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 no. I'm sowing something on the inside of you, and if you'll get your ground right and keep it, your harvest will come. The Bible says in Galatians, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he surely reap. And God is not mocked or not made a fool of. In other words, God says, I am not going to be mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. 
Now, let's go down this a little, little farther here. Verse 22, he says, For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifest. There is nothing hid that shall not be manifest. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that God is hiding. He's hiding the supernatural manifestations for us, not from us. And I believe it's hidden in the seed. I believe that the finished works of Jesus have been hidden in a seed. I believe that every word of God contains a portion of the finished works of Jesus. See, if I want collard green seeds, I'm not going to plant apple seeds thinking I'm going to get collard green seeds. I'm going to get collard green seeds. So likewise, when I go to the Bible and there's something I need to harvest in my life, I'm going to get that type of seed. I'm not going to go get glory hallelujah seed when I'm trying to get healed. I'm going to go get healing scripture if I'm trying to get healed, and I'm going to plant healing scripture in my heart. I'm not going to plant prosperity scriptures in my heart when I'm trying to get healed. I'm going to go get the healing seed. If I'm broke and I need something to help me help provision, I'm going to go get provision seed. If I'm in bondage and I need to harvest some deliverance, I'm going to look at my Bible and get some deliverance seed. It can no longer be this thing where we just go around talking about, well, just get anything in the Bible. No, I want to show you how to intelligently live a life in the blessing. Amen. And this life is just like a farmer putting a seed in the soil, doing what he's supposed to do, giving it time, keeping the ground in the right condition, and it grows up. We don't know how. We just check on it, and it grows. So likewise, you take the Word, put it in your heart through your ears, your eyes, and your mouth. That's the gate. That's the pathway to the heart. Put it in your heart. Protect your heart. Guard your heart. Put a fence of peace up around your heart because peace guards your heart and your mind. And it will show up in your life. I believe it too, boy. I believe it. I believe it. Now watch this. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifest. Isn't that the same way with a, a physical natural seed? The, the harvest of, of collard greens. Somebody say, why you keep saying collards? <laughs> Thanksgiving, bro, was good yesterday. Collard greens, cornbread. I don't know how y'all do it. I don't, I don't eat collard greens with a fork. Down south, you, 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 you wash your hands. Put your pinky out. <laughs> Take some collards. Look home, bread. Excuse me. Y'all, 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 y'all. Millennials, you don't know nothing about that. What? Boy, you don't know. You don't, don't, don't knock it till you try it now. <laughs> all right, now listen to this. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. So all of the stuff you eat was in a seed. It was in a seed. This, this whole world, the most important thing in this world is a seed. You and I are here as a result of a seed. You one day were in a seed. The stuff you ate yesterday was in a seed. It was hidden for whoever would come and plant it right. And I'm telling you, the natural can't outdo the supernatural. If you can plant a seed in soil and get the harvest, you can plant the Word in your heart and get the harvest. Look, look, dude, if I was you and if it's the first time you heard this, I would be sitting there like, oh, good gooba galoo. Oh, sucky, sucky, nah, wait till we get out of here. Go home and make you some, some harvest cards. Put it at the top, this is the harvest. I'm going to call this harvest this. Here's the seed I'm going to plant in my heart every day. Huh? Put the date down, all right? And then when the harvest comes, I mean, now see, there's some things you do. Uh, you, you know the farmer, when he plants a seed, he doesn't just go to bed the whole time, right? He goes out there to make sure ain't nothing coming up trying to choke it. He makes sure he gives it water. 
He makes sure that he gets some sunlight. Come on, y'all. So likewise, when I plant the seed in my heart, I, I, I make sure I, I drink the water of God's Word. I make sure that I expose myself to the Son, Jesus Christ. Not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. I, I, I make sure that I, I put up a fence uh, called peace to guard my mind and my heart. It's the same way. I mean, after a while, he's going to ask the question, how would you compare this? And he's going to compare it to farming. Most Christians don't know this. Most Christians spend their time hoping and praying, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Hit me. Uh, uh, hit. It's not how it works. No word, no supernatural. Yeah, but what about grace? Grace has already done its job. Grace has already made everything available. We're not talking about you making something. We're talking about you learning how to, to receive into manifestation what grace has already made available. The problem is not trying to make it. It's made. It's finished. It's done. It's how do you take it, not make it. How you take it, not make it. Are y'all listening to me, man? He said, it's, it, shall not, it shall not be... It, it, which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear, with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. So the way we respond to what God speaks to us will determine how much more we will get. Verse 25, For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he has. So people will lose their revelation if they don't use it. You know, God's giving you a revelation of how to do something. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And look at verse 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. Look what he says. He's going to tell you what the kingdom of God is like. That's what we operate. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. So is the kingdom of God. So seed is the word, and he says he's casting seed into the ground. And should sleep, and he's going to rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He don't know how. He just know he put it in the good soil, and it grew up. My God. For the earth bringeth forth fruit. Well, look at this. This is, this is good here and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up. Now, what is he saying here? It takes time. Keep the seed in the ground. It takes time. Keep the seed in the ground. Whatever word, I, I love that idea of a harvest card. I, I might publish it if you don't do it. Uh, you know, put the, put the thing at the top, list the scriptures that you're going to sow in your heart every day. Take it through your eye gate, your mouth gate, and hear it. And, and you hear yourself saying it, you're planting it every day, and when it's in there, you're watering it every day, praise the Lord. And then, you know, you just keep going, and, and it takes time. And you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't take it up. You don't, you don't get up after a week and say, I don't see none yet, and then you, you go in and you dig it up again. What did I say last week? You cannot get a harvest off part-time seed. It's got to stay in the ground. So when you put it in your heart, keep it in your heart. Keep it in your heart even when the contradiction shows up. The very contradiction of what you're believing for shows up. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in your heart. Turn to your neighbor and say, keep the word in your heart. Word heart. All right, watch this. Verse 28, for, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. What comes up first? First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. So there's again, it takes time. There's a, there's a process. Our hearts, which is the ground, will release the power of any word seed. Our heart, which is the ground, will release the power of any word seed. See, the word seed carries everything that grace has made available. Our heart, which is the power, will release whatever's in that word seed. Oh, my God, our heart, our heart, our heart. You have no time going around having your heart flooded with drama, Amen. chaos, strife, none of that. That is all an attack on your supernatural funnel. You just ain't got time for it. 
Your attitude to people need to be, you know what? I love you. I thank God for you. All right, but I'm not going there now because I'm working on something. I can't allow this to come in my life because like weeds, once I allow it to come in my life, you know how weeds just show up and you're like, God, dog, how did that get in here? It just kind of blow around and you just got to guard your heart. You have to guard your heart. You have to guard your heart. Turn to your neighbor and say, guard your heart. Now, I'm challenging you. Now, listen, well, I'm t I am going to teach this until you get it. If I have to cut your head open and pour this stuff on the inside of you, it is your time. It's time now. It's time now. You have been where you have been long enough. It is time now for you to come up to the level of the supernatural where God is calling you. And I'm telling you, this is what I've done. I've lived this. I know. I'm, listen, I... I mean, Whatever happens, go get the Word of God on it. That's my seed. Plant it in my heart. Water it. It takes time. Guard it. It's coming. It's coming. I'm telling you, this is it. I ordain all of you as spiritual farmers tonight. You have 66 bags of seed right here. Whatever the issue is, go get some scripture, uh, go get a tape, a sermon. Put that word on the inside of you until you know it's possible. And you walk away. You walk away fired up. Amen. Hallelujah. I would testify. I can, I can go back 30 years and testify. I can testify. I did this. I am doing this. This is how I live. This is why the world is so freaked out over me. They don't know how it happens. I plant it and I harvest it. I plant it and I harvest it. Sometimes certain seed take a little while to come up. Sometimes certain seed, I can plant it and get something right away. Man, I, 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 last year I planted, putting those seeds in my heart where, where, where my girls were concerned. I took that harvest about three, four months ago. I, I harvest, I plant, I harvest. I don't freak out. I don't threaten to blow my brains out. I ain't jumping off no building. I, I, I plant and I harvest. Because where the natural can't give it to me, the supernatural has already made a way. Y'all ain't listening to what I'm saying, y'all. Y'all don't hear me. So it takes time. He says, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put in the sickle because the harvest has come. See, when the harvest comes, you got to take it up now. All right, now watch this, verse 30. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God like? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? So how do you compare the kingdom of God that we live in as Christians it, it, how, how would you liken it to something in this natural world? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth, but when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. So likewise is the kingdom of God. Like, it's just words that came out of a book that's going to grow into the physical manifestation of what those words said. <sighs> and I know Christians who don't want to get in the Bible, but this is my bag of seed. I got to have this. This is my bag of seed. I love being inspired, but every now and then I like to do my own, I like, I like to grow my own food. I want, I want some organic harvest. I don't want nothing you loan me. <laughs> and, 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 and many such parables he taught. And then I'll, I'll just go through this in verse 35. He says, and the same day, the same day, after he taught his disciples, the same day, he said to them, he gives them the word, let us do what? Pass over unto what? All right. He did not say, let us die. He didn't say, let us drown. 
he said, let us what? Okay, so, so that was seed, right? Had they taken what he said, put it in their heart, and protected it. See, they didn't spend no time with it. They heard what he said, but it didn't have no root system. So when the storm came, persecution and affliction, it stole out of their heart, and they were saying stupid stuff like, don't you care about us? Why are you sleeping? And Jesus woke up and said, y'all should have been able to take care of this. He says, I knew y'all were going to need some peace, so let me give you mine. And he said, peace. He said, stop and be still. He spoke peace in the storm, and the storm stopped. That's why you got to maintain peace in your heart, just in case you need to speak it into something. But you can't release what you don't have. You hear me? Now, does everybody understand what I just said? Yes. Now, let me tell you what I came here to tell you tonight. Hallelujah, I came here to tell you tonight. I said, man, I started to put a call in and say, John, y'all got it tonight, man. I'm going to stay here and let this turkey go and do what it need to do. <laughs> I said, man, I got to preach this thing tonight. Don't know, I'm going to be preaching on I-85. I got to preach this thing tonight because I got to get it out of me so I can see, see it all, all together. Now, now. Take what I just said to you. Now go to 1 Peter chapter 1, 23. 1 Peter chapter 1, 23. Now we, we finna hook this thing up. Now y'all ready? 1 Peter 1, 23. I'm telling you, everybody need to walk out of here tonight ready to do some farming. Because 2018, you ought to be seeing the manifestation of your seed. Now I, I ain't playing with y'all. I'm not playing with y'all. This is it. This is it. It's, we got to have some, you got, I got to get some world changers who have phenomenal evidence that this works so that you passionately want to go out and tell somebody. See, somebody says, well, I don't know why folks don't want to go soul winning because they ain't got nothing to talk about. But when you, when you start getting this stuff on the inside of you and start working, you're going to be looking at people like, what is the matter with y'all? But we need a witness. Somebody got to bear witness of what I'm talking about. It ain't enough for me just to know it and a few others to know it. Somebody got to know what I'm... I, yeah. Listen, I was supposed to have been dead at least three times, but it's that seed that was planted in my heart that kept bringing that heart. See, I sowed a seed of, 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 of preservation, a seed of soteria. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I say, so that's the of the Lord. You are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are my God in whom I'll trust. A thousand shall fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me because with my words, I have made you my refuge and my fortress and all is well with me. For with long life am I satisfied and you'll show me your great salvation. And that in me produced the harvest of protection. It produced the harvest of healing. I remember, man, I was, I was as broke as the Ten Commandments. Moses dropped at the bottom of Mount Sinai. And I got a hold of this revelation, and I started planting it. And I said, Lord... According to Psalms 35, 27, you take pleasure in my prosperity. So, Father, I declare right now that I am a prosperous man, that I walk in the blessings of the Lord, and the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. And, Father, I thank you that I have insight, ideas. I'm like a magnet. People want to bless me, Lord. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name that I don't have any more problems with poverty because I'm divorcing myself from poverty. And in Jesus' name, I, I know the supernatural is available to put me at a place that I can't get there by myself, but I call those things that be not as though they were. I am prosperous. I am wealthy. I am rich. I'm out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. You know, I kept saying that, kept saying that. Do you know that harvest has come up? Everything I just said to you has happened in my life. All right, let's go on this journey now. Why am I so convinced about this? Why am I so convinced about this? See, I have to talk about emotional prosperity because that's the stuff that's messing your ground up. 
Bible says, even as your soul prospers. So I got to talk to you about depression, and, 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 and I got to talk to you about, you know, all of those soulish things that are going on in a person's mind. Condemnation, self-condemnation, self-hate. I got to talk to you about all that stuff. Because if that stuff is still there, it's messing with your ground. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of what? Corruptible seed. But of what? And what does he call incorruptible seed? Word of God, which liveth and abideth what? So the Word of God is indestructible seed. The Word of God is indestructible seed. It is seed that will never fail. So if you planted the seed and got no harvest, it's never the seed's fault. It's always the soil. The seed is going to always be good. The Word is always going to be good. It's never going to be the reason why your healing wasn't manifested, the reason why your provision wasn't manifested. It is never going to be because something was wrong with the words you got out of the Bible. It's always going to be something happened with the condition of your heart. Are you listening to me? So the problem is never going to be with the seed. Turn to your neighbor and say, the seed, all right. Seed say, the seed is always going to be all right. The Word of God is incorruptible seed. It's seed that can't be corrupted. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Now, you got that? All right, now, look what he said in there. He said, we were born again, not of corruptible seed, but our born again came out of what? Our born again came out of what? So the Bible says we were saved by grace, but we got it through faith. <laughs> and he hid it in a seed. Born again of the incorruptible seed. Grace made salvation available. God hid it for us in a seed, and by faith, we got born again. Oh, did y'all see? Did y'all hear that? Grace made salvation available. God hid it in his word. We received that word by faith, and we, we got something that was supernatural. Born again. Now, the same, everything else works the same way. Grace has made healing available. It's hidden in healing's word, seed. You take the seed by faith and harvest the manifestation of healing. Provision and prosperity work the same way. <sighs> Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 4. I, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all, I promise you, if I got to teach this 50 times, 50, 50 times, 50 times, 50 times, I got to teach this 50 times, you're going to get this. You're going to get this. And you can shout when you see the harvest. See, farmers celebrate when they say it's harvest time. It's time for us to do that. And we're going to change the, com the complexion of the Bronx. Yes. There's going to be a light. We ain't on no hill, but there's going to be a light. And the word going to go out and say, I know how to change your life. I got some seed for you. If you can just plant it and take care of the soil, your life will change. Everybody ever met? I have a, 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 a relative of mine who had a really bad uh, addiction. And he tried all the facilities and everything. We told him, just come to church every time it opened. You know he did that? And he's still coming every time it opened. But see, he ain't got the addiction no more. He left that a long time ago because when the word comes in like a light, it'll drive away the darkness. Glory to God. The word is the answer for everything. People don't want to hear that. I don't feel like going to church. It ain't going to church. It's going to get some seed. 
is going to get some help to plant some seeds. Well, I, I read the Bible myself, but in all you're getting, get understanding. See, you can read the Bible yourself, but you might not understand what you read. That's why you need to come to the house where we can give you some understanding so that seed can get in the ground. I apologize. I don't mean to be screaming and hollering at y'all. I'm, I'm screaming and ho I'm hollering like something wrong. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm excited. I know it worked. It worked for me. It took me out of, out of the ghetto of College Park, George. You understand? College Park, you understand? In a two-bedroom duplex. You understand what I'm saying? Having to heat up water in order to put the cold, hot water in there, the cold water, so we can run a bath. Government food. You understand what I'm saying? And then I got a hold of the word. I got some words, see. It changed my whole life. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, something good's going to happen to you. dare you to try this. Doctor told me, you have an ag aggressive form of cancer. There's no panic. Why? Because I got some seed. Get a blank card. Name of this harvest is Healed from Cancer Harvest. Hear what we're going to plant. This one and this one and this one and this one. And I didn't wait till tomorrow to start sowing it. Started walking down the hallway that night, putting that seed on the inside of me, putting that seed on the inside of me. Now, after so long, after I put the seed on the inside of me, the Bible says the abundance of grace comes through thanksgiving. <laughs> the abundance of grace comes through thanksgiving. So I moved from sowing to thanking. And then I took communion over. I activated everything I could to take care of that seed while I was in the ground while I was growing, while I was germinating, while I was developing. Because I knew that wasn't God's will. It wasn't God's will for me to die no cancer. That ain't no God's will. Whether the baby of the Lord, no, that ain't the Lord. Sickness don't come from God. How God gonna give me something he ain't got? How is God gonna give me something he ain't got? Poverty doesn't come from God. How is God going to give you something he ain't got? God is not a poverty God. Poverty is a part of the curse. How are you talking about God is the one that made you poor? Ain't nothing poor in heaven. Well, Jesus was poor. You better read your Bible again. I got a sermon. Go look it up. Was Jesus poor? I get, I get a, give you about 15, 20 scriptures all through the Bible. How proven that he was. He had a house. He had wise men following him to give him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They found him at two. He had a robe on that they gambled to see who could get it. They don't, you don't gamble for, you don't throw no lots for no rags. He had a treasurer. What a poor man doing with a treasurer. What the treasurer was supposed to keep if he was poor? The dust in his pocket? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brother Dollar, the Bible says foxes have hoes. Birds of the air have a nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. See there? Jesus was homeless. No, baby, you just don't know how to read the Bible. Back up a little bit and read it in context, and you'll find out that they were on their way to this particular village to have a meeting. But they didn't want Jesus preaching in their village. So they said, you can't have this meeting here. And so by the time Jesus got there, he stopped his boys because they're about to jump on him, you know. And he, boy, he said, calm down, boys. He said, foxes have, ho uh, uh, have holes in this city. Birds of the air have a nest in this city. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head in this city. Keep reading. That's why we're going to the next village. Because in, in the book of John, they asked him, Jesus. They said, Jesus. Where dwelleth thou? 
Jesus said, come and see. And the Bible says, and they came and they saw and they dwelt with him the whole day. Honey, if Jesus was broke and poor like most preachers and religious people proclaim, then we're all hypocrites because you say you're trying to be like Jesus, and if you believe Jesus was broke and poor and homeless, then you need to get rid of everything you got. You need to give your house away and move under the George Washington Bridge so you can be just like Jesus. You don't believe that because if you believe that, you'd have did it a long time ago. And yet, as soon as somebody starts talking about money, you want to pull up that old religious bull crap about Jesus was poor and he wasn't poor, praise God. You just don't understand how to sow a seed, reap a harvest. You don't understand that this is incorruptible seed. I apologize for screaming tonight, but I've been trying to get this into people's lives for over 37 years. And it is your time! Come on, go to two people and tell them, I'll never be broke another day in my life. The number one enemy to lack insufficiency and poverty is a seed. It's a seed. And it's the seed of God's Word. Before it's your other seed. The seed of God's Word will now infuse every other seed. Money seed without the backing of God's Word won't give you the supernatural that you expect. But when you're moved by God's Word to plant that, plant that financial seed, then it's fertilized and supported. See, every time I preach this, somebody think I'm trying to get their money, and the only people that think that is the one who ain't got no money. I got seed. I don't have to lie, manipulate, steal, cheat. I have seed. All I got to do is plant it. I am not in debt to any man, and I don't have to kiss up to any man. I have seed. You can never be broke as long as you have seed. You can never die of sickness as long as you have seed. You don't have to worry about staying in bondage all your life as long as you got seed. Now, what we look like? Got 66 bags of seed and, and, and suffering and barely getting along. We can change that. If you're patient enough and go through it long enough, you know how it is. You, it's kind of like a diet. When you first start, oh, man. I started just eating right several years ago, and, man, when I started eating right, I was hungry 15 minutes after I ate. I'm like, man, this, this ain't going to work. Somebody said, do a Nutribullet. I did a, a, for breakfast, I did a Nutribullet. I felt like I was, I, I ain't never been that hungry after the new. It's like the Nutribullet had something that make you hungry. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. And then they said, stop eating at 6. And I'm 6, 6.30. Don't eat nothing else after 6.30. Oh, my gosh. I'm thinking like, I'm shaking. I can't hardly go to, I got the. You can't have, the only thing you have is some tea, a protein shake, or some berry. What? Can I have all of them at the same time? No, one of them. <laughs> but you know what? 
After a while, somebody say after a while. After a while. That thing got all right. So likewise, I know you can do this. I know you can do this. All right, now watch this, 2 Peter chapter 1, 3. Man, man, we can do this. We can do this. Your whole life can change. God's not going to do it for one and not do it for somebody else. My sister, who I was sharing with you about last week, one of the greeters, y'all know her. There she go. You know, I'm talking about... I didn't, I didn't tell the full testimony right. I told you the Lord blessed us with, blessed us with six figures, but it was a six-figure job, but it was a six-figure job part-time. She showed up here in this country with no shoes on, holes in her shoes. She don't look like she got no holes in her shoes right now, do she? And she took the word and planted it the word and believed God and rejoiced while she was gone from I believe I received to there it is. What do you do between I believe I received and there it is and there's this big gap where it don't seem like nothing happening. That's where you praise God. That's where you thank God. That's where you shout. That's where you hold your hands up. That's where you make yourself come to church over and over and over and over. And then something happens. And all of a sudden, you're walking in the harvest of the supernatural. Boy, that'll make a good book, The Harvest of the Supernatural. I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, listen to me, man. This is how I live. I'm telling you. Y'all remember when we planted the seed in our heart in Manhattan? We was at the Manhattan sitting, and people, they act like they don't remember what we prayed for. Lord. Give us a facility where we'll be an oasis in the midst of the desert. And then he give it to us, and then they, they, they tell me they're too scared to come over and all these little stuff. What? Boy, you better hurry up and get over here for your seat be taken. It ain't going to be too long. Y'all understand? You, you hear what we're praying, right? You hear what Brother Jay was praying tonight, right? Listen, we, 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 in, the, in, the, in the supernatural, we're filling these seats up right now. We call in things that be not as though they were. We're not moved by what we see because we got seen. And God said, I'll increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. Man, I got to quiet down. I, I, I don't know why I'm hollering tonight. I'm just, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, you're down, 2 Peter, we're going to say it, 2 Peter 1, 3. I right, check this out. According as his divine power, God power, hath given unto us, what? All things. Now, he shouldn't have said all things if he didn't mean all things. If he meant some things, he should have said some things. If he meant two things, he should have said two things. He said, according to his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to what? Life. And what? So everything that we'll need to, for a godly life, He's already given it to us by, how do we get it? Through what? Through the knowledge of him. But we get it through the knowledge of what? Yeah. But we get it through the knowledge of what? Yeah. We get it through the knowledge of what? Yeah. Him. Him who? Well, go to St. John chapter 1, verse 1. Through the knowledge of him. What does that mean? We get all things that pertain to life we get it through the knowledge of him. He's giving it, but we get it through the knowledge of him. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with, and the Word was, so him is the Word. So we get it through the knowledge of the Word. What do we get through the knowledge of the Word? All things that pertain to life through the knowledge of of the Word? Well, has the Word ever produced anything? Well, look at verse 14. Him came through it. <laughs> now, notice he says the Word and Him are the same. Verse 14, and the Word, watch that, was made what? 
and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, the full of grace and truth. So the word is full of grace and truth. I said the word is full of grace and truth. And the glory of that word was the manifestation of Jesus. Amen. Always something in a seed. Follow me carefully. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. All these things made available through the word. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. All these things made available, locked up in the seed of God's word. Verse 32, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Did you hear what he was talking about? The word of his grace or the word that's full of grace. The word that's full of the finished works. The seed that is able to build you up. And this word is able to give you an inheritance. This word is able to give you an inheritance. All of the promises that he made, all things that pertain to life and godliness is in this word. All of his grace, everything we got by grace is in this word. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Amen. Colossians 3.16. That's why I'm such a fanatic about teaching God's word. That's why you read in the Bible, Jesus, all of these, you see him teaching, teaching on a boat, teaching on land, teaching, teaching. Why? It's the seed of God's Word that makes the difference in our life. Verse 16, let the Word of Christ, let it do what? Not, not just in the Bible, but let, let it dwell how? Richly. Let it dwell in you how? Richly. Let it dwell in you how? Richly. How is it that a Christian don't know but one scripture, Jesus wept? <laughs> Show me a Christian that is void of God's word, and I'll show you a Christian that is void of supernatural harvest. See, people want what you got, but they don't want to do what you do. You tell them how to do it, but they don't want to do it. And now they're using grace as an excuse for not doing them. Well, I'm under grace, you know, he'll hit me. No, he's already done his job. He says that you access this grace by faith. Let us, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. I got the word in my psalms. I got the word in hymns. I got the word in spiritual songs. I'm singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Let the word dwell in you richly. Sing it. Quote it, talk it, rap it. Somebody said, rap it? You, man, my, my Angelo used to be singing with groups. She was the first rapper, boy. She, she throw them poems out. She, she sung with Ashford and, and Simpson, I think, at one time. She came out. That, man, come on, words. Most powerful thing in the kingdom of God is the word. Look at Mark 4.20. Mark 4.20. This thing's all over the Bible. You, you've got to be convinced that like a man who's leaning against a water well and he's talking about he's thirsty, what'd that look like? You, you're, you're leaning against a water well with, with 100,000 gallons of water. And you're leaning on it talking about I'm thirsty, about to die. All he got to do is lower the bucket, right? Take a dip, right? That problem over. Well, we're doing the same thing. Leaning against the Bible. Tell my Lord, help. <laughs> he said, I don't really help. Taste and see. <laughs> Verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground. They hear the word, they receive it, and they bring forth fruit. Listen, some 30, some 60, some 104. Good ground says, I accept it. Good ground says, I receive it. But look at Hebrews chapter 4, 2. 
Hebrews chapter 4 and 2. Oh, man, I'm going to have to stop. Dude. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. So listen, the word preached doesn't profit everybody. I'm up here preaching my guts out tonight. Don't mean that everybody going to walk out of here with some. I'm going to tell you, the only people that's going to get anything out of what I said tonight, he said they preached the word, but it didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. They heard it, but they didn't accept it. You ain't heard nobody feeling sitting up here, I'm preaching the word. I know, I listen, what I'm preaching, I know about. I know about it. I got over 30 years of experience. I know this. I ain't, I ain't preaching this, hoping it's right. Yeah. Hoping and praying, oh, Lord, let this be right, Jesus. Now, but I'm telling you what I know. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, somebody said practice what you preach. No, I'm preaching what I practice. You understand what I'm saying? I'm preaching what I practice. So the word is preached, but it didn't profit those who didn't accept it. And there are people that come to church all the time. They hear the word preached. Well, I don't know about that, Reb. You, what you, and what blows my mind is, how you going to sit up there and talk about, oh, God, help me to say this right. It's like I taught you how to tie your spiritual tennis shoe. Get up and do it. Now ask the Lord what I said when you get home. You probably didn't need to say it in English. It's so amazing to me how people who don't know the word want to correct people who do. What's the matter with you? Where is your experience? Where your fruit? I don't know about that. You're right. You don't know. <laughs> well, I just don't believe that God, you know, need us to be taking no word, putting it in our heart and all that just to get a harvest. Well, what if a farmer were to say that? What if a farmer in the natural say, well, I just don't believe that God wants us to take this seed in this bag in this barn and go through all that work, tilling the ground, getting it all together, doing all that, all that sweat and all that. I mean, we under grace. God will just take the seed out of the bag, out of the barn, and the Holy Ghost will put it in the ground. He gonna die of starvation, I guarantee you. And that's, that's what happens with some Christians. They just... I don't know what they're, they're just like, this, these are, he has already given us something so awesome. Since you are in a word society, and since you're going to use words anyway, he's saying, let me give you the right ones that'll benefit you. Because whatsoever, whatsoever you sow, even the wrong words, you're going to reap. Now, nah. Now, if you don't believe what I'm preaching on today, let's look at your life. Look at where you are right now. R-A-T, right now. Look at where you are right now. Let's do a Purina cat child. <laughs> cha cha child. Let's do, do a Purina cat child. Go all the way back. <laughs> and let's check out all of what you said and how it led up to where you are. You are a product of the words you use or the seeds you sow. I don't know about it won't have nothing to do with me. And look at you, with your lonely self. Oh, man, I don't know nothing. And you're becoming progressively ignorant. You're a product of, you're already a product of words. You're already a product of words. I'm trying to get you to change. I got my granddaughter with me. I got to get her home, so I got to go, man. Uh, let's see. I end this. Do it! Do it! 
All right, so I'll pick up with this. Uh, this I'm telling y'all, this is the most important sermon I have ever preached. So, somebody said, you say that all the time. Well, well, well listen, it is. So I'll tell you what I'm expecting. No, you speak for yourself. I, 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 it's time. It's time. And I wasn't playing. Go and get you a little blank card. What's the name of the harvest? Get your phone. Go and locate all of the word that covers that harvest. And every day, meditate in that. Say it out loud. Say the scripture out loud. Move into thanking God for the harvest of it. And stay with it. Stay with it. Listen, when I first got saved, I put 25 names or more on there of all of the guys and people I used to hang out with before I got saved. All the crap we did. I got them all in that one thing. I put them on the list, and I said, this is salvation harvest. I'm going to pray and quote the scripture and send laborers towards them for all of them to be saved. Do you know this day everybody on that list is born again? Yeah. It's a harvest. It works. It works. You got to stick with it. Though. Can't be going around playing church and just throwing it in your head. Well, you know, I'm going to plant my seed. God knows. Hallelujah. Yeah, God knows. But do you know? It's your ground. You got to be a, a steward of your ground. I'm telling you what to do. Get the card, man. Something visible, something you can touch, something you can put in your Bible. List the scriptures that cover your situation. Write those scriptures out. And every day, pull a card out. Spend time with it. Keep it as a testimony. Put the date where you started. And put the date where the harvest comes. Man, we ought to do that. We just ought to all fill cars out. And when they come, every time a, a car get done, somebody bring it up, we buy a nice little bowl or something. <laughs> Stick it in there as evidence that this is the truth. And then now you will help me preach this around this world. How you going to deny it? I dare you. I double dog Dino Wichipoo dare you. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Spend another year broke, busted, and disgusted? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Die? Because the doctor said they ain't got no cure for your disease? What you gonna do? Stay sad all your life? What you gonna do? Stay homeless all your life? What are you gonna do? What are you prepared to do? It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time to show this world that we have a supernatural God who can turn our lives around. Join me on this journey. Let's conquer the financial realm. Let's give God the glory. For all that is done. Let's pray. No, let's thank God. Thank you. You know, we increase. You, you have abundance of grace through thanksgiving. Thank him for everything that grace has made available to you. Thank him for a harvest that hadn't even come, but you intend on planning for it. Thank him. Just simple, thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, for that. There's a, there's a powerful thing that happens in the midst of thanksgiving. Multiplication occurs as a result of thanksgiving. What are you prepared to do? 
What are you prepared to do? What are you prepared to do? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. She watered that seed with praise and worship. You water that seed with praise and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap for the victory. Man, I'm so, so, so fired up. I believe God. I believe God. I, I know it's Saturday night, you know, Saturday night, it ain't, it ain't even church day or whatever. It's just, just Saturday night, but who cares what day it is as long as, as, long as you can get some seed. Amen. When people ask you when you're on your way to church, they say, where are you going? I'm going to go get some seed. You want to go with me? Let's, let's prepare to give. Take your... Uh, what 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 we do? Take your um. Yeah, yeah. You you need an envelope. Yeah, lift your hands up if you need an envelope. And these folks already got an envelope. They must have got one when they came in. Look at that. They ready, boy. They're like, oh man, I got man. What you doing? I already got mine. I thought you knew. Listen. Listen. I believe the Holy Spirit's gonna start speaking to you. This past Thursday night, I was up to 3 o'clock, maybe 4, I don't know. Just, I was just, God was just speaking to me. Just, he took me through this whole journey and just started talking to me about, about the things that were to come and just how vital this message is. And I'll share some of those things with you in the future, but I, I was blown away. My wife asked me, she said, what time you get to bed? I said, I, I don't know, baby, about 3, 4 o'clock. She said, what were you doing? She said, it's kind of unusual for you. I said, God was just talking to me. He kept talking. He just kept talking, and I kept hearing it. You know, God's always speaking. Sometimes we have to just tune in to what he's saying. And I believe that the Lord will speak to you. Somebody says, how will I know it's God? Oh, you'll know. He's going to say something to you that you, you wasn't smart enough to think of. You're going to say, I just know that with God. Oh, my God. I just praise him. I just worship him. I just praise and I worship him. And oh, God, let us love better than we've ever loved before, Lord. That's how you water that seed, man, love. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, shake hand de de also to la basha. Oh, I pray for this church. I pray for this church, Lord. That everyone be touched by your mighty hands. Show them your mighty hand, oh God. Lord grant infallible proofs that our families and friends will know that we serve the, the only wise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I just worship you, Jesus. Oh, God, I just worship you, Lord. Ah, ye land de le bro ko. I just worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Ko ribishnanda da baha. Oh God, I worship you. Worship you for the healings of, for those of you healed today, those of you delivered today. I worship you for this community, Lord, for this church, 
for every one of our members that you just put into heaven eyes heart and we love them so much and we thank you that the love that, that they, they have for us we just give you praise we praise you Lord thank you for this family thank you for this world changers family Lord oh hallelujah Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, Who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, O God? Who can heal like you can heal? Nobody. Who can deliver like you can deliver? Nobody. Who can provide like you can provide? Nobody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.